Hej på Guld Klud. Vi skal i dag møde en mand, som øh, skal snakke lidt om at kaste med den her bold og aflevere den til andre. En mand, som øh, har trænet det her at kaste og aflevere bolden til andre i øh, ja, snart en menneskealder. Jeg står her ved siden af mig. Han hedder Phil Hickey. I'll pass the ball to you. Thank you, Lars. Appreciate it. Now that the uh, interview is going to be in English, but uh, we should be okay. Yeah, my right? Danish is pretty brutal. So. <laughs> First introduction. Can you do a short, brief introduction to yourself, to Guld Klud? Who are you and uh, what do you do in Denmark? Yeah, well, my name is Phil Hickey, and I'm um, here in Denmark for the next five weeks. Well, actually, no, two and a half more weeks, but I've been here helping the Herdu Rebels out. Um, I've had a little break. I coach with the national team in Germany, so we got a little break between a game we had in Japan and uh, our European Championships, which Denmark is playing in as well, Amazing. in Austria in June. And I um, had an opportunity to come help out Herdu Rebels, develop this quarterback schools that we're doing on Fridays, every Friday throughout May. Mm -hmm. And uh, my kids are up in Helsinger, so I get to visit them as well. So it's a it's a whole package. Right? It's a whole package. It's yeah. a nice package, yeah. <laughs> but your American is, is undeniable. But you have a long roots of uh, of European football, yeah. uh, of, of American football in, in Europe. Can you tell us a bit about that uh, history? Your link to football yeah, in, in been, Europe? Yeah, been in Europe for 25 years. Um, I've pretty much done every side aspect of the game from television to managing to coaching to playing i came over originally in 1988 to play mm -hmm. played from 88 to 94 and then uh, ventured through worked a lot with the nfl europe league and developing the game i've done a lot of summer camps a lot of quarterback development stuff uh, fortunate enough to train some of the best quarterbacks in in europe over the years um, primarily in germany mm -hmm. worked with the danish federation from 2004 to 2008 developing their quarterbacks and passing games so Yeah, I've been busy, busy over the last 25 years. But it's a big game, so yeah. you need to keep yourself busy, right? <laughs> big and difficult. <laughs> and, and very complicated. Yes. Teaching coaches, uh, coaching uh, quarterbacks for so long, and, and especially in Europe, how do you see the development uh, of the Danish quarterbacks uh, during the last, what, 25 years or how long you've seen well, them? Well, the beauty, the beauty of the de in, in Denmark is that um, because of really the lack of funds, teams may not have the money to bring over an import. And one of the things that's impeded the development of the European quarterback is the import. Mm. The quarterback is the key position in the sport and it's hard to get around it. Uh, he touches the ball every game, every play. Um, but uh, there's, so there's that aspect that the Danish quarterbacks are given more an opportunity to play. And then there's the aspect the Federation has done a tremendous job in doing developmental stuff, bringing not only myself in from 2004 to 2008, helping other guys. Uh, Darren Slack has done a, a good job developing quarterbacks. And when I look at the tape, um, I mean, we've got a guy at Herlu who I think maybe one of the best in Denmark. The national team quarterback I had when he was 18 years old um, and a couple other guys, I think two of the three national team guys I had at juniors, at the junior levels and was able to uh, coach up a little bit. And um, so I think it's, you know, it's an aspect of the Federation doing a great job and and the kids given the opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's the drawback in Germany in the high levels where there's a little bit more money. Um, you have a great kid that I you know, may have caught at a junior camp And I find out he's playing receiver or defensive back because their team always brings over an import. So it's a little, it's a little disappointing sometimes in that aspect. Now you run this uh, Phil Hickey quarterback camp in school mm -hmm. here in Denmark. Uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to go, you might come back next year, right? Absolutely, yeah. I would love to come back as much as possible mm -hmm. and I'm um, trying to make it work with the Federation. Um, Lars Carlson from the Federation is a dear friend of mine, so we're always trying to do things to help out. Maybe we can get some Danish kids to come out to California next year because I'm moving back to California. Mm -hmm. um, but being able to come back to Denmark, spend some time with my kids and be able to do a little bit of football things and develop quarterbacks over here uh, would be a dream of mine, yeah. Can you break it down a little bit? Having a specific quarterback camp seems a little bit nerdy. I mean, it, may, it might be a little bit uh, strange for us. Uh, like a three-point uh, basketball yeah, camp. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> which I went to for a long time ago. But uh, what do you specifically coach during a quarterback camp, uh, which you can't do in a normal training session uh, with a um, team? Yeah, well, you get to spend a lot more time with them, mm. okay? So it's not just a 10 or 15 minute individual time as a practice. Mm. I have them for two hours. Yeah. Um, and as it says on the shirt, no feet, no throw. That's my motto, that's my mantra. Mm. It's uh, playing a quarterback position is all about the feet. And that's kind of with almost every sport and every position, but especially with a quarterback, if his feet aren't where they need to be to make a throw, the throw won't be accurate. Um, generates a lot of power, starts with the feet up. So I, I focus a lot on the feet. In fact, when I do a, a quarterback school, I'll spend the first hour and a half, we don't even throw a football. 
it's all about feet and doing drills. And what I try and do is I'm a fundamentalist. So I believe in teaching the fundamentals, giving the kids the tools that they can then take with them. And not only the kids, the coaches. It's great to see we had almost as many coaches last week as we had players. So if we can get the coaches coached up, they can in turn coach the players year round. So we do a lot of footwork drills. It's important. I get it all on video. We supply the video to the kids. So it's kind of like, um, a heavy duty crash course. You know, I'm not going to correct and make them great quarterbacks on that day. They're going to improve, but the the object and the goal is to give them the tools, give them the drills, explain how they're supposed to be done, get it on video so they'll have reminders that they can take with them and do it every day, you know, usually by themselves. And again, the level of the Danish quarterbacks and the level of Danish football. How have you see how do you see the development of our, of our football in Denmark? Well, the sport as the sport goes, as the quarterbacks develop, the sport's going to develop. You know, it's more attractive if the ball's in the air and, and being thrown and, and and being caught, <laughs> just being thrown. But um, and I look at you know two of the guys, Casper Schoom is a national quarterback, Lille Hauga, who's the second guy there, our guy who had some conflicts and couldn't couldn't be on the national team this year um, they're just as good as any German quarterbacks that we have uh, so the level when you compare the amount of players I mean there's some 25 30,000 players playing in Germany and here I'm guessing maybe I couldn't even throw a number at it actually but so when you look at that it's it's pretty impressive and they're getting good coaching we would like to think that we are all a part of the ed education of football in Denmark. Yeah. Do you find the Danish footballers well educated before they go into the game? I mean, do they know a lot about football when they come to you? Uh, do they have a, a good know, luggage? Or uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, I think I'm able to bring them new aspects to it. Um, they may know a little bit about how to throw a football, but I also try and teach in the schools, there's probably about 30% of it, it's probably, if I were to break it down percentage-wise, 50% uh, feet, 30% throwing mechanics, and 20% uh, mental or theory. So I talk about what I refer to as the bad guys, the guys on defense, uh, that we have to know the bad guy principles, uh, recognizing zones, and that gets back to that process and the information. If a guy, a guy who's physically talented uh, to be able to throw the ball, uh, but cannot process that information, he's not going to be a successful quarterback. Um, on the on the other side of that, if a guy may not have all that much talent, but he's able to process the information, you can build an offense around that. And maybe he can't throw that 20-yard out, but he can throw a 10-yard curl. And he knows when to throw it, and then he throws it on time, and he's able to, to, to manage his team. Um, so there's different levels of playing. Phil, thanks for taking time about uh, talking about your quarterback camp, and thanks for coming to Denmark to help us develop football. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, også for jer alle jer. God glød. Så skal vi selvfølgelig nok fortælle jer, hvis der sker noget med Phil, når han kommer til Danmark igen, og hvis I ikke møder det i den her omgang, jamen, så spring på sådan en quarterback camp og bliv rigtig god til fodbold. Vi ses. God glød TV, fordi vi elsker NFL.